It was the news we hoped we'd never hear. The widow of the murdered British aid worker, Alan Henning, has said his family and friends are numb with grief. David Cameron said he would use all the assets Britain had to hunt down the Islamic State militants who killed him. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Simon Israel, reports. The Manchester cab driver, Alan Henning's humanitarian mission to Syria couldn't have had a more desperate and tragic outcome. The 47-year-old's become the fourth hostage held by ISIS to be killed in the past 45 days. The video of his death was recorded after the Commons sanctioned airstrikes on Iraq. It has the same British voice as the others, only this time with a direct message to the Prime Minister. The blood of David Haynes was on your hands, Cameron. Alan Henning will also be slaughtered, but his blood is on the hands of the British Parliament. There had been repeated appeals to spare his life. His wife Barbara's was less than a week ago. I ask Islamic State, please release him. Reacting to her husband's death tonight, she said, there are few words to describe how we feel at this moment. All of Alan's family and friends are numb with grief. We always knew that Alan was in the most dangerous of situations, but we hoped that he would return home to us. That is not to be. His brother-in-law says it was only that hope that kept them going. I always thought it'd be coming home. I really did, and and most of my friends in that were praying and with me not be thinking that on the same lines that it'll be home soon. It'll be home soon, and we kept drumming it into ourselves and everybody that I knew. It'll be home soon. Called don't worry, don't worry. And now this has happened. It's just I don't. I don't believe in hope no more. Saving Alan Henning's life had united Muslim communities in the north like never before. One of his colleagues on that convoy today described him as the best of the best. The most amazing guy I've ever met. And, you know, I've, I've refrained from giving any interviews, etc. up until today. The reason was we had that glimmer of hope. Now, somebody said, quite beautifully that Alan's a light. There is a light that's been put out now. Within the last two months, desperate appeals from the families of the murdered hostages, James Foley, Stephen Sotloff, David Haynes and Alan Henning were ignored. And now, as has become the practice of ISIS, at the end of Mr Henning's video, the life of another hostage is threatened. He's Peter Kassig, ex-US military, now an aid worker. His family has responded the same way as the others, with an appeal. We implore those who are holding you to show mercy and use their power to let you go. They, like the other families, are helpless. A situation acknowledged today by the Prime Minister. Well, what we see with this organisation is that there is no level of depravity to which they will not sink. No appeals made any difference. But that was all Alan Henning's family could hang on to, the belief that they could make a difference. Now it's just got much harder for the other families. In a moment we'll hear from our political editor in Glasgow, but first to our reporter Jane Deeth in Mr Henning's hometown of Eccles. And Jane, what do the family say about the support they've had from the government? Well, today, understandably, his brother-in-law, Alan Henning's brother-in-law, expressed anger and frustration that he couldn't be saved during those 10 long months of captivity at the hands of Islamic State extremists. But important, perhaps, to mention that the official statement on behalf of Alan Henning's widow, Barbara, and his children makes a point today of saying that there was support from the start from the government and the Foreign Office for the family and that it got the family through the most awful of times. And Kasim Jamil, Alan Henning's friend who you saw in Simon Israel's report, who was with him when Mr Henning was captured, told Channel 4 News today that he actually stayed on in Syria for about a month and a half, desperately trying to negotiate with the Islamic State group. He didn't say whether that was directly or via an intermediary, but it was all to nothing. He had to come home to Eccles in Salford without his friend, for whom there will be a service at the parish church tomorrow, a service of quiet and reflection for an ordinary man, a hard-working man, who travelled 3,000 miles to Syria because he wanted to help. Thanks, Jane. Well, our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is at the Liberal Democrat conference in Glasgow. What's the political reaction to this? 
Well, here the Deputy Prime Minister said the perpetrators would be hunting down, hunted down for their barbaric acts. The real action was away in Chequers, where the Prime Minister uh, was speaking to security chiefs, including the head of MI5, and he used that phrase that you mentioned earlier, we will use all our assets. Unusual to reference the uh, normally covert stuff that goes on in the search for uh, people who perpetrated incidents like this. It's a reference, of course, to uh, intelligence people on the ground, special forces, but I understand what the Prime Minister was particularly saying to the chiefs in the room was, uh, all the kit that is in the skies above the possible area where uh, the, 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 this killing happened, we must be sure that we have enough of it, that if you need more it will be provided, so that's drones, planes, satellites, anything. And he was referencing that when he spoke about all our assets. The uh, government is feeling that it has had some success in trying to make sure that links are, are taken away to the uh, uh, video of this uh, uh, killing. And, and they feel that they're getting better at trying to make sure those links do come down, not 100% cover, but a lot of uh, cover on that. And they're looking very carefully at this other video that's come out of another jihadist who is, uh, appears to be uh, British and who isn't masked. They think, their first thoughts are, that is probably from a separate cell in a separate location. Thanks, Gary.